Coming up in this FinCast, we'll evaluate a diamond-bladed saw for cutting up your corals or fragging. One of my other hobbyists turned me on to Kimifure to have me try it to see what I thought. He said it was an awesome product. Till this day, four years into the hobby, I continue to use Kimifure. Hi everybody, John here with another FinCast and today we'll be looking at a diamond bladed saw that you can use in fragging or cutting up your corals, basically taking larger colonies of corals and making them smaller if you're new to the hobby, otherwise you're probably familiar with the term fragging. The folks at Inland sent us a DB100 to try out and we did it at the Life Support Center at Center in the Square, which is a museum here in Roanoke, Virginia where I live and where we operate Carlin Aquarium systems. The Life Support Center supports a coral grow-out system which is also tied to an 8,000 gallon reef among other things. There are jellyfish tanks there. We've got a what we call a chomp tank which has got some sort of aggressive marine fish, lionfish and that kind of thing and then an Amazon predator tank. And it's very popular with visitors here. I see about 400,000 people a year in the museum. Tony Yang is our expert coral fragger and I asked him to evaluate the saw. So first the unboxing and assembly, all very straightforward with one important step at the end. Now once we uh, once out of the box we added the platform for cutting and secured it with the four provided plastic screws. Next we added what I believe is called the blade drip guide which you, you should raise or lower based upon the height of the coral that you want to cut. Then something the company calls the blade cert drops into place easily. Next we added the water reservoir. This can be set to drip slowly as you cut so the saw blade doesn't overheat. The drip is controlled by a plastic screw that's designed to pinch the plastic tubing to fit your needs at any given time. The water eventually flows out through that tube on the bottom and then into a bucket or a drain and it all works very well and very easily. See it's not on. Oh, so it's a good thing you checked. Yeah. Now this is the important part. It's important to set the tension on the saw blade. Ours arrived without the tension set, meaning that the blade would have been too loose. So remove the screws and open the door to reveal the drive wheels. Then on the back of the saw you'll find the tension block. Loosen the screw and allow the springs to expand upward. That places tension on the drive wheels and holds the saw blade in place. Our saw required no further adjustment, but there are instructions with the unit on how to adjust further, and, uh, and I'll put a link to an online reference in the description of the video. If you buy the saw, it also comes in the box. We added water to the reservoir, and we were ready to frag. What do you got there, Tony? We got this big uh, Barabanki colony that we're going to frag up today. We wanted to really test the saw, so we used a thick piece of Bauer Banky, and the diamond blade cut through it with no trouble, leaving Tony impressed. Nice clean cut. Yep, very clean. Uh, it sliced through it like butter. I didn't push very hard on it and it was cutting. If you notice when I try to push it, it's kind of stopped a little bit and when I let go, it, uh, the bandsaw sliced again. Now that's a pretty thick piece of coral to frag, isn't it? Uh, yes it is. Uh, if you look at it here, it's, it's about like two or three inches, I guess. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's a pretty good solid rock. Next, you did a more precise cut trimming just a couple of polyps from the smaller of the two Bauer Banky sections. Up next, a large colony of Duncans, a much easier task for the saw, and again, no problems. After that, we cut a number of other corals, all with great results. So with a 
cutting done, the frags were glued to discs and placed back in the system to heal and to grow out. All in all, the inland saw lived up to its billing as a great tool for fragging corals and a great value for the price. Uh, I've been fragging for probably like 20 years. And you've used this saw before? I have. I personally bought this one and I, I like it a lot. Okay. So when you used it before, why was it your choice? Uh, actually, um, I did some research on the internet and a lot of people used it, so I went ahead and bought the same one. Uh, it's very easy to use. The, you can control the speed of the, the, the saw itself, so that's pretty handy and it's, it cuts through like butter. It's very smooth. Alright. How about like uh, the ability to turn and cut corals the way you want, that kind of stuff? Uh, it, it's very easy as uh, you saw me uh, frag up the Hanafora in a circular shape. So I turned the Hanafora and it just cut it in a circle. So tell me what you think if somebody is looking for a saw, tell me um, in a couple sentences or three what you think of this saw and what, what you would recommend. Uh, well, like, like I said, I did my research on it. Uh, I'll, this this one is very affordable, and a lot of people use it in the reefing community. So that is why I went and got it. Uh, and there are other saws out there more pricey, but this one is probably the best bang for the buck. So there's a look at the Inland DB100 bandsaw. I can tell you that Tony had used this earlier in his career. He actually owned one, uh, which we didn't know when the company sent us this one to try out. He was right at home with it. He loved it last time. He loves it this time. And he mentioned the variable speed, which he thinks is a, is a great asset with this saw. I'll put a link to the saw, the company, uh, the instructions, other information with the description of this video down below so you can check that out. In the meantime, please take a look for FinCasters on Instagram and on Facebook. Just search for FinCasters and you'll find us and follow along. I would appreciate that. And if you haven't already subscribed here on YouTube, please do that as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next FinCast.